Live from Television Park in high definition, the station you count on. This is WJBF News Channel 6 at noon. Well, new jobs are coming to Williston. I'm Barkley Bishop in today for Mary Morrison. And I'm Chris Kane. We thank you so much for watching News Channel 6 at noon. The coverage you can count on begins in Williston, South Carolina. That's where South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley just wrapped up a huge jobs announcement. The governor was part of a group that announced the National Beverage Screen Printers is expanding its Barnwell County facility. The two and a half million dollar investment is expected to bring 80 new jobs to the area. A new 14,000 square foot building has been added to the company's current facility. Company officials say the entire expansion is expected to be completed in the next five years. And the biggest compliment goes to Williston. The biggest compliment goes to Barnwell County because they could have expanded anywhere. We see companies moving, but they saw the work ethic here. They saw the profitability here. They saw the ability to expand and grow here in Williston. That's such a tribute. Now they've already started hiring for those jobs. You can apply by contacting Aiken Staffing. You can count on much more on this uh, big announcement coming up later tonight on News Channel 6 at 5 and 6. Richmond County investigators are looking for a killer this noon hour. They say someone shot and killed 39 year old Yosarian Brooks at a home on the 3600 block of Masoit Drive early this morning. Investigators have not released much information about this crime at this point, other than to say that Brooks was pronounced dead at the scene. Count on News Channel 6 to continue to follow the story throughout the day and have the latest information tonight at 5 and 6. Richmond County investigators are looking for this man. Herman LaPatrick Brown is accused of shooting 25 year old Marion Henley in the chest last night at a home on 3rd Avenue in Augusta. Investigators say the shooting stems from an ongoing feud. Henley was taken to a hospital where investigators say he's listed in serious condition. Brown is facing aggravated assault and weapons charges. Passengers at Atlanta's Hartsfield Jackson Airport are being allowed to return to their gates. A small electrical explosion at a maintenance shop knocked out power to one of the concourses this morning. Uh, nobody was hurt. The explosion caused some minor damage, but a spokesperson for the airport says there was no fire. A new information since yesterday at noon about an ex Sardis police officer shot and killed during what police say there was an, an attempted break in at the police station. The GBI says 34 year old Dwayne Burke was shot and killed after he broke into the evidence room at the police station. Investigators say it all went down around two o'clock Monday morning when a Sardis police officer noticed the door to the evidence room was kicked in. They say officers found Burke inside that room with an ax. There was a struggle and that's when Burke was shot. Burke was once an officer with the Sardis Police Department, but resigned from that job in 2009. At this point, I don't know a motive of why he broke into the building. Um, you know, he was in an area that appears to be in their evidence room, so I don't know if there was something in particular he may have been looking for here. A Burke has been the subject of at least one GBI investigation in the past. The Waynesboro True Citizen has reported that Burke was arrested in 2010 on charges of making terroristic threats and acts. The identity of the police officer who shot Burke has not been released. It looks like all the rain we've been seeing over the past week or so is gone for a while. But while the CSRA is drying out, there are still some problems left behind by the rain. Courtney Elledge explains. Days of rain and severe weather have led to this. Washed out roadways, blocked streets, and frustrated citizens. It's a 15 minute delay for us to go into town. Uh, it's made a 15 minute delay for my customers to come make, pick up their rentals on the weekends. And getting back, it's just a mess. The mess from nearly 10 inches of rain in two weeks has caused this sinkhole near Jackie Foshi's home on Willow Lane in Aiken. As a small business owner and aunt, the road damage is not only affecting her small company, she says it's affecting her safety. What if there was a family emergency you had to be rushed to the hospital? Then the ambulance would be 15 minutes late getting to us. Um, if we had to go to my husband's aunt that she's deaf and we had to get over there, it would be 15 minutes delay to get to the 520 mm -hmm. to go to her house. It's just a mess. Now about a mile down the road on Cherokee Drive, those streets are also closed. Crews have been repairing sinkholes on Five Notch Road and other hard hit areas, but Boshi says it's their turn. You don't ever, you don't know when it's going to stop. You don't know how much more damage is going to happen to the road. 
and I'm ready for a break. Nearby residents have been told by the South Carolina Department of Transportation they will be fixing these problems, but they can't do anything until the rain stops. Crews say the sinkholes formed after heavy rains overloaded the drains, causing an underground pipe to explode. Whether it's rain or shine, residents of Aiken say they simply want the problem to be fixed. How many sinkholes can we have in the CSRA within a matter of, yeah. what, seven days? Yeah, we've had a bunch of them. I mean, we really need to dry out here. Yeah, so. and thankfully, we're finally going to start drying out here. But as we dry out, we're also going to start warming up.